Let's start off with some election-related news. Republican Donald Trump has been elected the president of the United States of America. Now, Donald Trump beat contender Democrat Hillary Clinton by 288 electoral college votes as compared to 218 uh, by Hillary Clinton. The Republican nominee's projected victory came down to a handful of key swing states despite months of polling that favored Mrs. Clinton. The battlegrounds of Florida, Ohio, and North Carolina cleared the way for him. And as the announcement came, global markets plummeted with some showing the lowest ever, even after the Brexit vote. In his victory speech, Mr. Trump asked Americans to build the nation together. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. Thank you very much. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time, and we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Now it's time to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans, and this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. As I've said from the beginning, ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. It's a movement comprised of Americans from all races, religions, backgrounds, and beliefs who want and expect our government to serve the people and serve the people it will. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. I've spent my entire life in business looking at the untapped potential in projects all over the world. That is now what I want to do for our country. Tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American will have the opportunity to realize his or her fullest potential. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. So that was Donald Trump. He delivered that victory speech earlier uh, to a very, very excited crowd. Let's still stay in the USA, where reactions to Donald Trump's victory have been varied, while supporters of the victorious Republican uh, candidate celebrate their win to the White House. Those in the pro-Clinton camp have been very disappointed. Head of Joy News' political desk, Evans Mensah, has been getting some reactions from both camps. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So tell me, what's the feeling right now? I feel like that we've got rid of the corrupt Hillary Clinton and the corrupt machine that she, her and Bill Clinton have been in for years. They're done. They're through. They're finished. And we've got a new leader, and we're going forward. That's what about you? What, 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 what is it that won it for Trump, would you say? I think it was going back to our grassroots and going back to our, uh, you know, what we were built on, which is the Constitution. And I, and, I, and I think everybody sees the corruption. They feel like that, you know, we do need to be back to that and come back to that and come back to, you know, the uh, Christianity and the people. That's what it's about. We started this night. Did you actually believe you would win? Absolutely. I'm his county chair. We had nothing but a win. Listen, Trump won this because he's sincere, he's honest, he's a great American, just like us. He speaks to us, he listens to us, and he's going to take this country and make it great again. Yes, amen. Amen. On, on, a, on a very personal note, what does it mean for you, uh, your, your own personal life, and the way you, improve, you, you expect this country to improve going forward? We are good, down-to-earth people. We are humans, and Donald Trump is too and he personifies the goodness on this earth and he deserves this great we deserve this great I, I know the night is so young because the, fi the final um, I mean, you know victory speech will be giving what do you expect Trump to be saying tonight I expect him to be saying that this was a movement and that the American people came out for him and that we are going to make America great again yes. We're going to make our army, our military great again. Yes. Yes. We're going to make it strong. We're yes. going to make it more than anybody ever thought about our military. Yes. Yes. They're going to respect us. Yes. We're going to respect it, and we're going to laugh at us no more. <laughs> Absolutely. One big cheer for Trump. Yay. Make America Yay. great. Donald Trump, Trump, Trump. Best, all the best for Thank the rest you. of the day. Yeah. Nice Terry, to meet you. nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. Yes, yes. Your, your name again is? I'm Mike Elmer. Mike, you are the? County Chair for Donald Trump. Great. And Terry, you've also been doing a lot of the work. In I'm, I'm the uh, Des Moines County Center. Well, that was uh, head of our political desk here at Draw News, Evans Mensa, interacting with some Trump supporters who are very excited, obviously. Meanwhile, here in Ghana, some political parties are holding on to tight rope. Now, they're holding tight to hope. Now, they say the win of Republican Donald Trump means that people around the world are asking for change. Flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papakwisi Indum, tells Joy News he believes the people of Ghana would give him the nod come December 7. He spoke to my colleague, Beatrice Edu. I believe that what has been going around the world, uh, including in Africa, in Europe, in the UK, it, 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 it is telling all of us something, that the people are not happy. The people uh, are dissatisfied, disenchanted with, with what is known as the establishment, or sometimes what we refer to as the system. And that particularly when we have uh, so-called regular people, ordinary people, who feel shortchanged in life, whose aspirations are, are, are not, uh, you know, are not realized. Um, they they are speaking out, and they are saying we want change, but we also want change uh, w with people who have not been so much into the establishment. And so, for that reason, and for that reason alone, I believe that what has happened in America uh, has has some similarities going on in Ghana. Does this give I you... What, I, I does, don't know what it will end up with here in Ghana, but it gives me hope. It gives me hope that what I am hearing in places like Bongo, uh, in Upper West, uh, in, in, in places you know, like, 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 like Salaga North, uh, in Northern Region, uh, in such places all over the country, uh, that, that the people... Their, their, their dissatisfaction, sometimes their anger, their frustration, it gives me hope that they would put that sort of hope in somebody like myself who 
they can see. He's been trying hard to make something of himself and do something that other people can benefit in terms of jobs. It, 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 so it gives me hope, definitely. But Dr. Indum, the people you're yeah. referring to would not be in the majority of Ghanaians. Do you still believe that a Donald Trump win means that you as a leading businessman in Ghana uh, would also win come December 7? Well, it is, it is interesting that where my businesses are in Ghana, they, they, yes, they are in Accra, they are in Kumasi, but they are in out-of-the-way places where the people have been looking for hope, where the people have been looking for opportunity for jobs. And the people see that perhaps what I have been doing for business purposes, yes, for profit, yes. But that I believe the people see that, ah, perhaps we should go away from the normal career politi politicians, the professional politicians, those who have been neck deep in the system and, and, and work with somebody who is relatively, relatively out there, you know, facing off with the world, facing off with business, and trying to make something happen on the private side in Ghana. Dr. Andim, so, yesterday, so, the, yes. the, sorry to right. come in, the Electoral Commission gave all disqualified aspirants up to 5 p.m. to correct errors. And I know that for the PPP, for instance, the errors increased from where it was to 105. Did the PPP correct all, and that's expecting that you will be on the paper today? Well, uh, Beatrice, there was, it remained one error not 105, as some people have been talking about. There were uh, uh, 81 or 82 or so what the EC called concerns. But then we took those concerns seriously, and we addressed those concerns as well. So I believe that we have, have given sufficient answers to the Electoral Commission in order for them to be able to say the papers submitted for Papa Kwesindo uh, can be received and, and that he can be allowed to participate in the 2016 election as, as the presidential candidate. I have hoped that that is what they will. Also, the media advisor for the NPP campaign, Oboshi Saikofi, says she hopes the message of change the party is preaching will reflect in votes like it did in the U.S. Traditionally, there's been a sort of... Um, uh, line up between us and the Republicans. But I think this time, this, this particular election, we have to talk about maybe the issues that have formed the basis of the campaign, Donald Trump's campaign and Hillary Clinton's campaign. And uh, we need to congratulate them both, uh, the president-elect for the win and Senator Clinton for a really hard-fought fight. And the people of America for going through the process professionally and peacefully. But we, we are fighting our own internal battle on the platform of change. And I believe the lesson I'm learning is that the message of change resonates when the electorate are feeling um, disadvantaged, dissatisfied, and neglected. I think the majority of Americans voted for change because that's how they felt. I believe that Ghanaians know that feeling even more and we are at a place where we are recognizing that we, as Ghanaians, have not received what we need from this government. And I'm hoping that people will vote for change. And uh, President John Dramani Mahama also spoke ahead of the declaration of Donald Trump as president-elect of the U.S. And he was addressing students at KNUSD last night. Brexit took the world by surprise. But we should have seen it coming because there's the rise of populist parties, extremist parties all over the world. And these extremist parties are one, xenophobic, two, they are more protectionist, three, they are against competition. And so they want to change the world order. And so Brexit, we all went to bed thinking that Britain will not leave the EU. We woke up in the morning and Britain had left because politicians like Nigel Farage, politicians like Boris Johnson, you know, have an extreme rightist worldview. It is happening in Austria. The right wing nearly won elections. 
if you go to France, it is happening. The party that was thought to be the lunatic fringe, extreme right, is gaining popularity day by day. And if you go to US and you see what has been happening, I don't know if you have relatives there, but they'll tell you that the United States has changed completely. What has happened going into this election, the US is never going to be the same again. And it will take a lot of healing and reconciliation to bring the US back together. Already, there are many issues that the United States needs to deal with. That is the killing of black people by police. Every day, a black man or woman is killed because the police are on edge. They have a certain prejudiced mind about black people. But like I'm saying, whatever happens tonight in US, it will change the world for good. Well, let's still stay on the U.S. elections. U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Robert Jackson, says he is optimistic the U.S. policy towards Ghana and Africa as a whole won't change much with the election of Donald Trump as president-elect of the United States. Ambassador Jackson was addressed in a press briefing at the U.S. Embassy following a declaration that the Republican candidate will be taking over from outgoing President Barack Obama come January 20. Our Africa policy has changed very little over the last several decades, so I am not expecting significant changes in the U.S. relationship with Ghana. I expect that uh, our uh, assistance programs will, will continue uh, uh, pretty much as they are. Uh, the Young African Leaders Initiative is already funded for the, the coming uh, year, so I would expect that to continue. Um, the variations that I think we're likely to see are more in uh, relationship to uh, the larger uh, world powers and um, we'll, um, I have no doubt, be hearing more about the relationship with NATO and some of our other alliances as uh, uh, the president-elect puts his new team together and uh, they uh, uh, make policy proposals and develop a, a coherent strategy. It's now time to get on to social media. While well, there's been a lot of talk about the U.S. election, some are expressing a lot of shock. Others are excited that Donald Trump was declared winner of that particular election. But let's get on to Twitter because currently for Ghana trends, hashtag Peck hash party is trending. And our number two is TB Joshua. Now, as at 10 a.m. this morning, uh, Trump was the first trend uh, when you came to Ghana trends on Twitter. But uh, TB Joshua was also the second. But now... Hashtag Peck Hash Party is at number one, and TB Joshua is still at number two. A lot of people may be wondering why is TB Joshua trending uh, when the U.S. elections is being spoken about. Like, take a listen to something he told his church last Sunday regarding the U.S. elections. We have uh, ten days ago I was in the vision. They were telling me that at that 10 days ago, it was man that would have won the election. The law said, narrowly, there's a state that enormously 99% vote for this woman. And the woman, the woman narrow win. But I saw her facing several challenges over many issues. The Congress will be on her neck, including passing the bill. It will be, will be disturbed in regimes. It will not start now, but by February, you start to see the attempt to possibly pass a vote just to this, just mm -hmm, the voice of no covenant on the new. The vote of the new president will be rocked. That when the vote is rocked, okay, next Sunday we continue. 
Well, I'm sure for those of you who didn't understand why TB Joshua is trending on social media, you now understand. But let's speak a few tweets here. And uh, Ade Dayo Ayomi Day says, people uh, will say, TB Joshua, you said a woman will win. And TB Joshua will respond. You people didn't hear me clearly. I said, woman, uh, the person his head looks like wool and billionaire says tb joshua is only good at predicting football matches not u.s election is he really a prophet and he asks or oh, bet niger expert and uh, this one says tb joshua right now after the prophecy on u.s election so you can follow the conversation on social media. Obviously, obviously, there's a lot of talk about this particular U.S. elections. You're watching Joy News Today with me, Benis Abu Bid. We'll bring you more stories after this. Many thanks for staying here on Joy News today. Now, while people are reacting on social media about Prophet T.B. Joshua's prophecy that Hillary Clinton was going to win the U.S. elections, the National Peace Council in Ghana has called on men of God to stop fueling tension in the country with their prophecies about the December 7th general elections. Now, Council Chairman Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante has advised men of God to be circumspect with their revelations considering the times in which we are in. Now, he says such prophecies have a greater percentage of creating tension in the country ahead of the elections. But the moment, you know, religious leaders begin to um, declare openly their stake in the name of some form of spirituality because of what they think God has revealed to them, it creates tension. One would expect that, I, I do not doubt, God revealing things to people. But I think we should also be very circumspect in the atmosphere we find ourselves, that it is not everything that has been declared to you that you come openly even to talk about it. Sometimes we need people to pray with you about the whole situation. So I will ask my religious leaders, the prophets amongst us, to try as much as possible to be circumspect, given the situation, the tense situation we find ourselves, that they do not add to it. Now, you're talking about ethnicity. There's nothing wrong with us being belonging to different ethnic groups. I'm not worried about ethnicity. I'm worried about ethnocentrism. What do I mean by that? The moment, as Ghanaians, we begin to look down upon other people in the name of my ethnic group and capitalize on that for political you know, favors, I'm creating division in the nation. And we should be very, very, very careful about that. All of us should be proud that we belong to um, different groupings. Diversity is important. But diversity is not intended to be division. Diversity enriches unity. We bring what we have, uh, uh, you know, as individual with distinctiveness into the port. And that contributes to the well-being of a nation. Let us not exploit it negatively, but let's exploit it positively. Meanwhile, security analyst Dr. Enin is also urging Ghanaians to be mindful of the confidence they have in some men of God and prophecies. He described some prophets as hypocrites who only capitalize on the season to make projections that have the tendency of fueling unnecessary tension. Elections in Ghana have become a win or die affair. And because of the allure of having access to public funds, when you win, issues of principles and normative frameworks don't seem to play a role. It is all about winning. And in trying to win, we create enemy images of each other. Okay, we use hate speech, we exploit ethnicity, we exploit gender, so that by the time the elections actually are called, We've got to divert critical state resources into equipping the police service, immigration, fire, and prisons to ensure that we have a free and fair election. But that's fairly uh, disturbing. And if you look at the exponential growth in hotspots, I mean, between 2012 and, and 2016, hotspots have grown from 3,168 to the present uh, 7,023. 
So there, there is a problem there, and that leads to the secretization, because people are willing and prepared to use violent means to win the elections. Religious leaders are deliberately saying, this is our cocoa season, and because people want to win, I'm going to throw some carries in there, and when they fall down one way, I'll say, God has said, one has fallen this way, so X will win or Y will win. I think it's just the bloody hypocrisy of our, of our really religious leaders, you know, driven by the allure of cheap money. That's why they are lying to us, basically. And I think so, if you say X will win and Y rather wins, how are you going to grow your church? Let's still stay on election-related news. It's some few days to Ghana's big day, and presidential candidate for the NPP is promising to drastically reduce the cost of fishing equipment and also roll out his much-talked-about free SHS program. The NPP presidential candidate made the promises during his tour of some parts of the greater Accra region. He visited the Ablekuma West, South, and Ododododio constituencies. John News' Max Solagbagba went round with him and has come through with this report. <laughs> The convoy of the NPP presidential candidate drove through the principal streets of Accra. Market women at the Kantamanto and Kunkumba Yam markets left their words and rushed to the shoulders of the street, waving party paraphernalia and gesturing the NPP's signature chain sign. His first stop was the Blekuma South constituency, where he promised to drastically reduce the cost of fishing equipment. <laughs> We will make sure we reduce the cost of premise fuel, outboard motors, as it was done during Kofor's administration. The agenda for free senior high school is also on course, with $1 million for all the constituencies. We will also make sure that the youth of this country are gainfully employed. He also introduced a parliamentary candidate for the area, Jerry Ahmed Sahib, to the crowd. Kufuado later went to the Kunkuba Yab market to interact with the market women. There, he promised to refurbish the market. He later introduced the parliamentary candidate for the Dodo Dio constituency, Nyilante Banaman. Nana Kufuado later visited the Kantamanto market where he interacted with the market women. Currently, they are still in the Dodo Dio constituency. Why he introduced the parliamentary candidate for the area, Nyilante Banaman, to the team number? of sellers here at the market. This constituency is very, very cosmopolitan. It's made up of different people from different areas. At the Bukum Square, the parliamentary candidate Neil Ante Banaman promised his constituents he would renovate the Salaga market and slaughterhouse in the constituency and also institute a scholarship scheme. <laughs> Nana Akufuado is winning the elections in 2016. We will renovate the Salaga market and the local market here. By God's grace, within one year, I will renovate the slaughterhouse. I will institute a scholarship scheme. I will use the common fund as seed money. We will create an office here. If your child gets aggregate 6 to 15, they will get education free of charge. <laughs> He ended the tour at the Ablikuma South constituency where he introduced the parliamentary candidate for the area, Esla Ousu. You're watching Join News today with me, Benis Abubedu.